Hi guys, welcome back to part three of the Hawker Hunter EDF build. Uh, we left it last time in part two, exactly as you see it on the bench. Uh, well, not quite actually, because I've um, added some filler. The next thing I just thought, actually, there's no reason why I can't cut out the top hatch. Now, um, now the spine's glued on. We get to the stringers, I'm guessing, but I'll turn the I'll turn the plan over. We'll have a look in a minute. So I'm going to continue here, guys, just gently easing my way through. When I'm nearly ready to release the hatch, I'll come back to you. Here we go. It's going. I think it's just. Just down inside here, just holding on there. There we go. Here we go. And da -da -da -da. Oh, that was good. That was good. It's right down on that stringer. In case you're wondering how to get the uh, push rod outers down inside the fuselage, because the form is here and you you've got two holes in it already. So what I did, I just pushed this piece of one mil something piano wire with a bend in it down from that end fed it through and when I picked up the hole it came up through so now I've got a piece of piano wire in the between the hole and the back then all I did was to slide the outer on the piano wire and of course it fed itself up into the hole so easy way of doing it I've made the hand finger grip holes in the bottom I've put the fillets in. Oh, I've put some. Um, I've put the. Um, we put the tongue on, but I've put a magnet at the back now. So I've got a magnet each side. So I've got a, in effect a double magnet. So that just clamps in like that. A few of you are guessing on part two the colour. Um, I'm still not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> I've hinged the ailerons and elevators. They're working very sweetly. Um, they're not permanently hinged, they're just not stuck in yet. I'll just show you the tailplane, which we glued on last night to the fin. And I've also hinged the elevators. Uh, how did I hinge it? Uh, I used my little centre pin marker. That Nick on the Baron flights gave me, um, whereby you just do that, push it in, and I've started doing that as well, just to make sure. And you end up with a hole, which is exactly in the centre. I then took a pin, pushed it in about a centimetre, and that leaves me with a hole big enough for a piece of one millimetre fishing line, which is what I'm going to use for the hinges. Uh, it's just one mil trace. The important thing to remember with fishing line, it's quite difficult to glue. Well, it's not difficult, but you'll get a much better adhesion if you take all the shine off of it and give it a bit of, just pass it through some sandpaper. Cut it to a couple of centimetres and away you go. Here's a hinge I did earlier. I've glued it in just with white glue and I'm going to break it to destruction now. <coughs> okay, so they both pulled out of there, but they've taken balsa wood with them. So they're not going to take that much stress. I've got three here on the elevators and I've got four each on the ailerons. Next job is to, in fact, put in some aileron servos. Now the aileron servos go on their side up here in in the fairing buried in there as far as the mountain lugs the servos are epoxied in and i've built little wooden boxes around them little wooden boxes i think i like that i bought new batteries uh, because my other ones were flatter and um, flatter and rectangular these are let's just move you around a little bit these are squarer 
So I've just opened it up slightly there and taken off some wood off the very pointy bit of the wing. This is going to slide in there like that down onto the Velcro plate like that and I can slide it quite a long way forward or back to get the CG. I couldn't afford just to go out and buy these on a whim like that. It's only because of you lovely channel members uh, who pay me a monthly amount which allows me to buy all this stuff and, and, and buy stuff like this because I'd have to delay the build a couple of weeks um, to, to have enough spare cash to do this. So um, you guys who are channel uh, uh, members, uh, uh, thanks so much because, um, you know, it, it allows me to really bring these videos to you and, and indulge in my passion and, of course, your passions as well. It's only a small amount, um, but it makes a huge difference. So thanks again. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Right, let's just bend you down again. I think the next job is to um, start the finishing. I've mixed up a little bit of uh, very wet PVA, or just white glue, any old white glue. And I was going to, thinking of dampening it, wasn't I? But I think I'll just go for it as it is. Just put a weight on there, man. Give it a go up here, see what happens. If the tissue isn't wet, it'll it'll trim, but if it is, it'll just tear. No, just torn it. So I think I'm gonna have to let that dry a little bit. And then I'll trim around the edge and work my way around. So uh, back soon. As you can see guys, I'm making reasonable progress. Lots of wrinkles in them, but when you look at the finished wing, I gave it a light sanding, all the wrinkles have completely vanished. This wing is on its way to drying. But while it was upside down, I thought I would do the back half. Then I thought, well, let's do the front half. So that's what I've just done. Got some lovely big uh, roundels to put on and registration numbers. This is Neville Duke's machine, the RAF test pilot. Right, okay, bit of a disaster. <laughs> Uh, the first panel I covered underneath went really well and it got progressively worse and worse. Um, I had a lot of wrinkles in this which I've sanded out but in sanding them out it's actually broken through the tissue and left lines or even broken through completely which I've patched. I haven't sanded these yet but they'll always be the wrong colour so I'm going to have to do something. Um, and I'm probably going to have to um, spray it or paint it. But as a whole, I mean, it looks pretty stunning in red. But we'll see if I can uh, maintain the red scheme or not. I'm going to change things around. The uh, big Mercury 4 fuselage, which went on beautiful. Uh, what did I do differently? Well, I used um, Ron Seal matte varnish to seal the wood. I then sprayed the model red, I then tissued it, and then a couple of more coats of Von Seal. This one I've used sanding sealer and put the tissue straight onto that. And to be honest, the sanding sealer has prevented the tissue from adhering properly to the wood here and there. Um, underneath, I've, I've sanded it a lot of it off. I'll show you. Uh, these things happen. Uh, so what am I going to do? I'm going to, I've got to spray the model, I've paint it. I've filled in a couple of these horrible areas. I'll sand that smooth. Then I'll give it a coat of uh, Ron Seal varnish and then I'm going to paint it. Uh, the paint I'm going to use is what I put on the triplane, which is looking gorgeous. Uh, and that is Valspar Matte Emulsion. I'm just going to paint it on. It'll spread out quite nicely. I think I uh, used um, a roller for most of this one, but I think it'll it'll go on okay. It'll spread okay. So I'm going. That's what I'm going to do. It's going to change the colour slightly, but not to worry. This look maybe a little bit 
too orange. Using my crosshair laser, I've set up the fin and tail plane. So it's pretty much bang on now. So uh, we'll let that dry and then I'll put a bit of emulsion on. So I've given it two coats of clear varnish and hopefully that's enough to disguise any faux pas. You can see there some crackies there, but hopefully the matte finish will build it up and and uh, it'll be okay. So that was the worst wing. You see it still looks pretty rough, but I think when it's uh, got its coat of matte on it, it'll look okay. So. Okay, I've sanded it down and I've given it its first coat of matte emulsion. So it's covered quite well. I'll rub it down again and give it a second coat. I think it's slowly getting there, redeemed. A little bit patchy, but it's only the first coat. I think it'll look okay. I don't think it's going to look as good as I'd hoped. You know, there's the yellow one. It's okay. Oh, I've got a red one. <laughs> So this is coming out a little bit better. What I've done is to gently wet and dry uh, the, the uh, creases and painted over them again and done that two or three times. Um, and I think it's not looking too bad. It could probably do with another coat. Um, but I think we're getting there. It's not as good as I wanted, but it's, I think it's as good as it's going to get. Maybe, yeah, definitely another coat on that wing as well. I'll come back to you just prior to putting on the lacquer or just post putting on the lacquer and we'll see how it looks. Okay, guys, I'm cutting out some, I printed out some roundels and fin stripes um, and I'm sticking them on with blue tack. And, and then I'll give the whole thing a couple of coats of clear lacquer. Um, yeah, I've got the fin stripes on and the rear roundels. I've marked on two little pencil lines here so it's just a matter of oops just a matter of picking them up like that start from the center make sure there's no air bubbles in there and there we go we'll go around the edge when I cut these out I don't just cut them vertically, I cut them so there's an undercut all the way around. And then when you do this, it sort of bends it, the paper down so as it's smoother and you don't get a white cut edge. That's the theory. Bit of blue. So there we are, there's one done. Uh, let me just mark the other tip. I've, I've decorated the cockpit somewhat as well. Look. Well, it's decorated it put some stuff in now i've got the uh, cockpit glazing sorted i print the roundels i've got a laser printer as opposed to an inkjet if you print on the inkjet there's a chance that the ink will run and uh, that's not good if this was a built-up wing and I've got wing ribs, I'd stick it on with white glue watered down and it makes the paper softer to get into the little angle. Now, underneath the wing are two registration numbers that go like that. I could cut them out, put them on. I've seen them in black and white. So, I mean, if I fold this over or under, I could cut them out in white. But there's one each side and there is a small tail number on the back of the fuselage, but I'm not sure I'm going to put that on or not. OK. Right. So I cut out the letters and I'm going to make them white. So I'm using the original piece of paper as a... Now it might curl up when I pull it off, so let's see. Nope, it's okay. Okay. 
Unless you get gluey fingers as well. Everything gets gluey. The knife, your fingers. There we go. I'll just pull that off and put that down. That's lovely. I tried to pick a font which was reasonably close. Okay, so I'll carry on with the rest of the characters and then I'll come straight back. Okay, that's a good job done. So I'll let that glue stick dry slightly. And I think what's interesting is the, w, the W is next to the roundel. So it's right reading from the leading edge and right reading from the trailing edge, which is uh, interesting. So yeah, that's ready for, that's ready. I'm glad I did that actually, that looks really smart, really smart. It's only paper, but it looks nice. And it will, it'll, um, let me show you the lacquer I'm going to use. I'm going to give it a couple of coats. People often ask me what lacquer did I use. So this is just from eBay. Matte lacquer by a company called Autotech. It sprays beautifully and it's as cheap as you'll find anywhere. So I've got to spray the fuselage and I've got all the pieces here lined up ready to go. All the control surfaces and the hatch. I'm also going to spray the inside the cockpit. I still haven't found a, a pilot, but I can do that later before I stick the canopy on afterwards. So, yeah, we're all ready. Might be an idea just to cover up those electrical connections. I'm going to disappear outside for this because it's going to make a bit of a stink in the house otherwise. I'm fitting the control surfaces. Um, Three bits of one mil fishing line in the elevators, pushed into pinholes and glued with uh, white glue. You could use super glue, but it grabs so fast that you won't have time to accurately um, position the elevator. I've never had one pull out, but then I've never, I've never um, used uh, these hinges on such a big model certainly not a fast model so a little bit of experiment what i'm going to do is to the glue that's squeezing out i'm just going to uh, take it off before i push it home fully because i don't want a blob of glue any movement it feels just nicely stiff not too loose not too stiff just to remind you guys, make sure that your fishing line is abraded. Okay, that's the elevators on. And um, I tidied up the back end a little bit. I, I painted red in the, just inside, and then I painted black around the funnel, or exhaust I should say, and then it's um, lacquered. So I was just wondering if I ought to do it with um, gloss lacquer, but I haven't got any, and I want to crack on, so matte lacquer it is. Okay, let's do the same with the ailerons, and then when the ailerons are done, I'll come back to you and we'll have a look. Incidentally, I've just put a pilot in. He looks okay, doesn't he? It's, um, it's one of my profile pilots. He looks at it from the front. You always look at it from an angle, so profile easiest pilot out okay guys i'm wrapping it up for this video this is part three part four will be the radio installation and then it will just be the maiden i've just sat the cockpit on just for a second i'll stick that on that will be part of the next part uh, but um yeah there it is with the control surfaces on and looking very hunter like Really pleased with how that's come out. So thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in part four. Hit that subscribe button if you're not. You don't want to miss it. And give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. If you've made it through this far, it's been quite a long video. 
uh, but it hasn't come out too bad in the end. Really happy with it. And if you want to take a look at the channel membership down below, this is what keeps the channel going. I couldn't do it without you guys. So thanks very much indeed. I'll link to the playlist at the end and I'll see you in the next part four. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.